guys, I'm out to drive in tonight. Believe it or not, yeah, well, here, here's the deal. It's my vacation, um, and I hadn't been to the drive-in this whole week on my vacation. That's unheard of. It's, a, it, it's a, inconceivable. Inconceivable. But um, I decided that I wanted to go to the drive-in, even though, uh, here's my choices. I could have gone to see Fast and Furious, uh, and showing the baby boss. Come on. Or I could have seen uh, Black Widow again with Cruella. Um, and Cruella, yeah, uh, I know. Look at me and then think Cruella and you think, man, that's not a movie for Scott. And admittedly, it's not my kind of movie. But I have been hearing good things about this movie. And also, I do like Emma Stone. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, and I get to see um, Black Widow again, which... I'll be honest with you, I kind of was, I was a sleepy guy the last time I saw it, so I think I missed a few things. So this is a nice cheap way to go ahead and fill those gaps in for myself. So I'm going to go and see those two movies in just a few seconds. I'm going to be right back to let you know what I think about, well, I'll say a couple words about Black Widow, but more than likely this is just a review about Cruella. All right, see you in just a few. Bye. Guys, I just got done watching uh, Black Widow for the second time in like the well in a week. Um, I think it was like two days ago since I saw it last. And I remember uh, the last time I told you guys that it seemed a little un unbalanced. The uh, slow parts were slow, and the the, the action sequences the quick. Uh, the fast parts were a little too fast for me. I don't know whether it was because I was in a crowded theater or if I was sleepy or whether it was just because I had somebody with me and I wanted this movie, I wanted him to like that movie as well. Um, but I, upon the second viewing, I really did enjoy this movie. I thought it was more balanced than I thought it was the first time around. I, I enjoyed the uh, slower parts a little more and I, I felt them to be more important this time around. Um, and the action sequences are really fun. The, here's the only three criticism that keeps on rolling through, through my brain. Is that um, this movie... Uh, now, here, let me preface this. I am a 52-year-old man. I started collecting comics when I was 10 years old. Um, and when I read comics... In fact, I've read uh, a whole bunch of them today. Um, every single page is just colorful and it's packed full of colorful characters with colorful costumes. And I understand when it comes to the movies, even these big budget movies like this, they had to tone those characters down. They had to bring them more down to reality. Um, I understand that. But this movie right here seems like the least Marvel-ish movie uh, of all the Marvel movies. It, we do have like the group of Black Widows that they're training in the Red Room. Uh, we do have the Red Guardian. Um, we do have superhero, superhero elements in this movie. It just seemed like it was more of just a spy thriller. Um, so, in that respect, I, I didn't find... I didn't get that, that type of enjoyment out of this movie. Um, but it was still a darn good movie. I enjoyed the heck out of it. And I will stand by the 90% that I gave it before. Um... Yeah, so there you go. That's the only thing that I wanted to add to that review. Um, so I'm just going to move on. We're going to go ahead and watch um, uh, Krilla, and then I'll come back in just a few minutes, seconds, whatever, and let you know what I think about this film. <laughs> All right, just a few seconds. Bye. Hey, guys, I just got done watching the movie. Um, what should I say about this movie? I went into this movie thinking I wasn't going to like it. Um, hmm. I'm still undecided. <laughs> still kind of undecided a little bit. Um, now, let, let me uh, just say this. First off, it's obvious. It is a prequel to the um, 101 Dalmatians, the animated movie. Um, so, what we're actually doing is we're taking the villain from that movie and we're uh, making a whole feature film about this this villain. 
and how she, her rise of power, as it were. Um, to do that, we need to make a kind of a, a sympathetic character out of her. And I think this movie does accomplish that in some respect. But the problem is, is that the, the character, I guess to keep it in line with what she becomes at the end, they, they put us on kind of some kind of emotional roller coaster where she becomes the sympathetic character in the beginning. Uh, the, the second act, she becomes the, the, the villain that we expect in the 101 Dalmatians. She is um, sociopathic and uncaring. Uh, and then we do have somewhat of a character redemption, but the thing that I would want to impress upon you guys is because we're going on that roller coaster, because we start, we, we change that, uh, that, that character seemingly in a 180 and then back into a 360 to make her more of a sympathetic character at the end, it relies directly on the, the acting ability of the actress that is portraying her. Now, I don't have anything wrong with Emma Stone. Get me, don't get me wrong. And she's been even she's been uh, nominated for uh, Academy Awards for her roles that she's done in past uh, movies, um, and I'm sh I'm sure that she felt inspired by how she portrayed that character to us. I personally didn't buy that character all the way through. I, I got lost. It just seemed like. She, when she was the sympathetic character, I totally bought it. But when she dwelt into that kind of that sociopathic character, she lost me. It seemed just like a very two-dimensional, very exaggerated villain character. And I, I didn't buy it. Um, I think that took away from the movie for me. Now, uh, hats off to Mark Strong. I want to mention Mark Strong. He is a very small... He's like... Uh, fifth or sixth character down on the uh, lead character role list. Um, but at the same time, Mark Strong proves to us that there is no small role. I really like that guy. I loved him in, uh, what was that, Shazam? He played a great villain in that. He plays a very sympathetic character in this movie. I really like that. All the other characters um, are adequate. I liked her henchmen. I thought they were fun comic reliefs at times and kind of the anchor to keep us involved in, uh, involved in this story. They they did their part well. And I'm not saying that Emma Stone was bad in the role. I think she turned out a, a decent Koala Deville. I just think somebody might have been able to make it a little more sympathetic even the, in the sociopathic part of this plot to make us care about that character 100% instead of only uh, like 66%. Um, that's the only thing I have wrong with this movie. Well, and the end. The end was very contrite. And kind of, uh, it took a couple liberties that I didn't enjoy. Um, but most of the plot twists in this movie made sense to me, and I enjoyed quite a bit. It was just the ending that uh, it was too much, uh, too much of a bite, and I had a hard time swallowing it. Um, so, therefore, it, uh, the role, the, 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 um... The score I'm going to give this movie, I'm going to give it an 80%. I did enjoy it. I thought that there were some interesting elements of the story. And at times, I really did like Emma Stone in that role. But other times, some of the the, uh, the plot elements did not uh, go down uh, easily for me. And some of the performance from Emma Stone was just a little over the top. And I had a hard time believing it. So there you go, guys. Um, I... Um, I enjoyed this movie. I'm glad I saw it, but I'm probably never going to watch it again. 80% is the best I'm going to give this movie. And uh, good old Black Widow, I'm sticking with the 90%. I really did enjoy that movie. So, uh, guys, I'm out of here. I, I wish everybody peace, Montanay. I'll talk to you guys later, and goodbye.